So the first thing we're going to plant in the garden are potatoes. Now potatoes are an interesting vegetable. If you were to take a banana or a broccoli and plant them in the ground, you would not get anything. But potatoes are different. Potatoes are root vegetables. And so when we plant a potato, we do get more potatoes. They grow not in ground, but underground. If you look at this potato, you'll see little nodules right here on the end. Right? That's called the eye of the potato, and that is where the potatoes will grow. That is where roots will come out. Here is an example of two potatoes that we're going to plant. You'll notice that one of them has been cut in half. Grandma cut that in half, making sure that each side had a couple of these little eyes on them so that they could grow roots. The larger ones will cut in half or maybe even in quarters. Here's one, a whole potato, that we're going to be planting in the ground. To start planting, or before we plant, the way we plant potatoes, I should say, is to dig trenches. And you've seen that we've already marked out here some strings where the trenches are going to be. So here we go. Start digging some trenches. See the top part of the soil comes off easily. That's as deep as the rototiller dug. I am following these strings as I dig my trenches to make sure that the rows of potatoes are straight. I dig through, dig down beyond where the rototiller has tilled, dig deeper than the tiller has tilled. And you can see as I build this dig this trench, I'm going to be following this string. After a bit of hoeing, a bit of digging into the earth, I now have created these two trenches. And these trenches are where we're going to plant the potatoes. Now is the time to start laying the potatoes in the trench. We do so placing the potatoes about 8 to 10 inches apart. Again, I'm going to point out what's called the eye of the potatoes, or the potato eyes. This is where the, the roots will sprout from. Turn this down so that the, the root gets a chance to dig into the ground and we just place these into the trench. Now that we've got the potatoes all in the trenches, it's time to cover them up. And you might think we would cover them up with soil or with dirt, but we're not. You can cover potatoes with a number of different things. Straw, earth, but this year we've decided to cover with leaves, that is, shredded leaves. And there are a couple of reasons why we might want to do that. One is that shredded leaves are a good fertilizer. Potatoes really love shredded leaves. And another reason is that since potatoes are root, pota root vegetables, we'll need to dig them out of the ground when it comes time to harvest them. And if they're covered over with something simple like leaves, it's easier to dig them out. So, let's get started and cover the potatoes with leaves.
I've now finished covering the potatoes with shredded leaves. You may notice that we can still see the trenches. That is, the trenches have not been completely filled with leaves. And there's a reason for this. Potatoes are interesting crops. When they first start growing, you like to cover them, uh, the part that's growing up with more and more. It's called a mounding up. And you'll mound up, add more dirt to the potatoes as they grow. So where here you see trenches, at, by the time the potatoes have all grown, we will have added more and more dirt and or shredded leaves so that you'll see little hills instead of trenches. Now that we've got the potatoes in the ground, before we plant anything else, we want to put up a fence. The reason we need a fence is because we've got lots of animals around here, wild animals that are fun to look at, but unfortunately they like to eat the vegetables in our garden. So we're going to put up a fence to keep them out. Now this is not going to be a fence like in your backyard. This is going to be an electric fence. So, for an electric fence, we need electricity. And that comes from this transformer. Then the electricity is going to come through the transformer into these wires. And we're going to, they're going to be held up by these posts. The idea of an electric fence is that if, you, if an animal or a person touches it, it gives them a little tiny shock. Now you may know that in your house there are electricity, there's electricity, and you may know that you're not supposed to touch any of the big thick wires. These wires are protected so, so that they won't hurt you. But the electricity goes through your house is very thick, is very powerful, like this electri electricity coming into this transformer. But when it comes out of the transformer and it connects to these wires, it's smaller, it's not as powerful electricity. So when an animal touches it, it won't be hurt as much as it will be surprised. But I would advise anybody not to touch our electric fence because it gives them a surprise in the form of a small shock. So I'm going to get started with these fence posts and put them around the garden. You can see that I have put posts around the entire garden now. And so the next step is going to be wiring, stringing this wire around on each of the posts. So I'll just show you how I get started. I go to each post and clip it in. Put it into each post, and then you'll. When I'm done, we'll have wire strung all the way around on each of the posts. I've finished putting the wire on the fence, but the wire is so thin that looking at it from a distance, you can barely see it or see it at all. But of course, up close, it's a lot more visible. And you can see that I've done put most of the wire down close to the ground. And that's because the animals that we have problems with are small animals like rabbits and groundhogs. And so we put additional wires close to the ground. We even put this extra set of wires with their own version of fence posts right next to the ground. Now that we have uh, set up the electric fence, all that remains is for us to get electricity to that fence. And we do that by means of an extension cord. If you look closely at the ground, here you can see that we have our extension cord, which runs all the way to the barn. It's difficult to see this part because it's green and it blends in so well with the ground. 
but when as we get closer to the fence, it's a white extension cord. A lot easier to see. Now, a lot of heavy electricity, a lot of electricity comes through this cord. Uh, and if it weren't for the fact that it's covered with plastic, it would be very dangerous for me to hold. But it is covered with plastic and that's okay. What happens here now is that we plug it in to what's called a transformer. And the transformer will transform this very strong electricity into a weaker form so that it's not so dangerous. Once it's plugged in, the electricity starts flowing. It'll flow into the transformer here, get transformed into smaller, a smaller strength of electricity, go through this smaller wire and into the electric fence. Now the electric fence, the electric wires part of the electric fence, you can't see it, if we get very close you can see it, has metal wires that are exposed to the air so that if you touch it you'll get a small electric shock. Not enough to hurt you but enough to surprise you and that's how the electric fence works. A small animal will come to our garden, look inside and say, hmm, maybe there's good vegetables to eat. They'll try to get under the wire, they'll brush the wire, they'll get a small electric shock. Won't hurt them, but it'll surprise them, and they'll go away and not bother our garden. And now it's time to plant the rest of our spring garden. So to make sure that the rows are straight, we stretch these strings out along the ground. And when we plant, we'll make sure that we plant right next to the strings. Here we are preparing the ground for planting. So here we're setting out the onions five and a half inches apart. And here we're actually planting those onions sticking them in the ground. Next, radishes are going in. They have little seeds. They have very small seeds, as we're told. Here, we're planting spinach. We'll continue to plant multiple crops the same way. One of the crops that we're going to plant are peas. Peas are interesting because they are vines. Now, vines are plants that don't really have that strong stalks. What they do is they reach out and grab onto other things, usually other plants, uh, to hold themselves up. But we don't want other plants in our garden. And so we're going to put up, we put up a fence. Here's the fence. And we're going to be planting our peas really close to the bottom of this fence. And when the peas start growing, they'll grab a hold of the fence and grow up tall. Here we're planting the peas, as you can see, right next to the fence. Much of the spring garden has now been planted. We'll add a little bit more in a couple weeks or so. But right now, the section you see before you is pretty much set. Later on, we'll be adding more plants towards the back of this garden. In the meantime, there's not much more to see until the plants start sprouting, and we'll check in again then.